Well, hello and welcome to another Atamagaze Wrestling Podcast. My name is TJT, and today I have something very special planned for us today. Uh, this is what I like to call way too soon predictions, uh, where I basically set myself up for disappointment and try to <laughs> try to dream book uh, WrestleMania 34 in this case. Uh, we just had SummerSlam, so this is basically the half po- uh, halfway point in the WWE year. Uh, the WWE uh, year is not like the calendar year. Basically, the beginning and end of each, uh, let's say, season of WWE, uh, it always begins and ends with WrestleMania. So if we go from this year's WrestleMania to next year's WrestleMania, that is our WWE year. And SummerSlam is smack dab right in the middle of it. Uh, uh, SummerSlam is the second biggest pay-per-view of the year. It's one of the big four pay-per-views. Uh, so what better time now than to get my hopes up completely and try to predict what I think, uh, should happen at WrestleMania 34. Now, this is not to say, I think, this is not to say that I think WWE will actually do this, but hey, who knows? Maybe if I actually put this out there, they'll somehow see it and go, oh, that actually sounds good. Uh, <laughs> With that in mind, let's get right into it. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about each match, but I'll try not to go on and on and on. Uh, So, for the pre-show, as WWE very much likes to do, uh, of course we have to have the annual Andre the Giant Battle uh, Memorial Battle Royal. Uh, For that, it's sort of difficult to pick who should win that match, but... I'm going to go ahead and go with Rusev. The guy has done a lot for this company. Uh, he in, in terms of he's lost a lot for this company. <laughs> uh, he, I think he starts... He, he deserves to start being booked better. He deserves a much better character. He deserves... Uh, more exposure, and he deserves a landmark win to sort of start that all off. And I believe, uh, what better way to start it off than with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? Now, in the past, it hasn't meant too much, but maybe this will be the start of you know. Well, now it actually kind of means something when something. Maybe this is the start of great things for a competitor that has done a lot, and maybe the year after they do Ziggler. Or maybe they do Ziggler for 34, or whatever. But for this one, I'm going ahead and I'm saying Rusev. Now, basically, all after this is just whatever's come out of my own head. I know I had to do the Memorial Battle Royal, and I had to pick a winner for that. But from henceforth, (laughs) this is all my brainchild. Uh, Next, for the pre-show, I would actually have, since she's technically quote-unquote back or coming back uh either way soon we should see her wrestling again so i'm gonna go ahead and go with Paige versus emma in a submission match for the pre-show uh you know wwe i think we always have the uh sort of viewpoint that the pre-show isn't as important as the main show and it's you know, all the forgotten matches go there, but I think WWE would like to think that the pre-show has just as good of matches, they're just the matches that have to start off and kick off the show, uh, and to further drive home that point, you gotta, like you did, like, admittedly they did with SummerSlam, you gotta just have good matches on the pre-show to make people watch the pre-show, and I think this will be one of them, Paige versus Emma in a submission match, uh, sort of harking back to their NXT days, rekindling that feud, maybe referencing that feud a lot. Uh, I would have Emma go over since Paige went over the initial time and because of all Paige's, you know, stuff. <laughs> uh, and because of the fact that Emma, like Rusev, has done a lot of stuff for this company and has never really had that sort of landmark moment in my opinion she's always been right there or she's always been second best or she's always been off to the side uh so this would be a good time to sort of put a little bit more focus on emma um so after that the last match of the pre-show i would have a cruiserweight number one contender fatal four-way uh now 
I'm gonna have TJP in this match. I don't know what his timeline is looking at uh, looking like because I think he's injured. Uh, yeah, I think I think he's still injured. Um, so it TJP's slot could change, but uh, for right now, I'd have TJP, Jack Gallagher, and Akira Tozawa, and Hideo Itami debuting in the cruiserweight division. Uh. And, you know, this is just just dream booking. <laughs> and I would have Hideo Itami, of course, debut and win his first, uh, well, technically his second <laughs> main roster match. Uh, because he was on the pre-show at WrestleMania 31. Uh, oh, wait, no, but he didn't win that. Okay, yeah, so, oh, but it is his second match. Okay, well, this time around, he'll win. <laughs> Alright, so getting into the main roster, let's kick it off with a bang with another Cruiserweight match, this time for the Cruiserweight Championship, pitting Cedric Alexander against Neville, the champion, in a ladder match. And of course, uh, you gotta you gotta go big or go home, I'd crown a new champion in Cedric Alexander, I think he's more than deserving, he's extremely talented, if you don't think so, go ahead and watch his match against... Oh my god, I'm blanking on this dude's name. Um, Kota Ibushi uh, at the Cruiserweight, uh, Cruiserweight? Cruiserweight Classic uh, Tournament. Uh, I think, wow, is it two years ago now? Or is it just one year? I think it's two years ago now. Um, they had an absolute g- classic match, I thought. I, I loved it to death. Uh, even with Coda going over Cedric, you know, it's basic. Isn't that basically the match that got him signed uh, to the main roster? They literally ch- chanted, "Please sign Cedric" after the match, and it was great. Uh, so he he really deserves that, in my opinion. Next, I would have uh, Seth and Dean, not the tag team champions, going up against the Revival, who is the tag team champions in this scenario, and I would have Seth and Dean regain their titles here. Uh, there's not a lot of setup really needed. Uh, you can either have them lose it against the Revival or beforehand, and they're constantly chasing it. Uh, I think this is a team that's much better suited in a chase than being, uh, tag team champions, unless there's a really, really good story. And right now, with just the landscape of the tag team environment on Raw, I don't think there's a ton of story potential, um, but here you really just need them chasing the championships and the revival is a great team. And I think that just these two teams will be really good together. So Seth and Dean reclaiming the tag team championships against the revival in a barn burner of a match as J as JR used to say. Uh, and I've also, uh, ordered and kind of stacked this card in a way that's, uh, SmackDown raw, SmackDown raw a little bit. This one was a little bit of a, I mean, Cruiserweight kind of is raw, but it's also its own thing, so eh, I don't really count it. But basically, after this, it's mostly uh, SmackDown Raw, SmackDown Raw. So with that said, going into the SmackDown Women's Championship match, I would have Charlotte versus Becky Lynch as the champion. Uh, in this scenario, I would already have had Carmella cash in, and a lot of time can happen between now and WrestleMania. Uh, basically, you know, Becky Lynch winning the championship at, let's say, the Royal Rumble or something from Carmella. Uh, sort of, sort of capping that feud because they've, I think they've sort of kind of gone in and out of a feud with her and Ellsworth. Uh, so sort of put the cap on that feud now if they have the rumored uh you know women's battle royal match we could always have charlotte win that and then go on to face her best friend at wrestlemania you know you could go the whole like eddie ray route basically i want this because we don't have a ton of really story heavy you know, women's matches on the main roster. They were really good at that in NXT. And here, a lot of the time, you know, there's not a lot of really deep story between the female competitors. They sort of rely a lot on what they did in NXT to sort of carry over into the main roster, and you can't really do that. But with Charlotte and Becky, we've seen that, that you know, they're obviously very close and they're best friends 
on SmackDown. So you can enhance that story there and you can tell that story there really well. Uh, I would have them go into this match both faces and I would sort I would keep them both faces because you don't really if you remember the WrestleMania 21 uh, Eddie and Ray match, that's not where Eddie turned. I mean, they're both still faces. You could just have best friends fighting over a title and it just be healthy competition. And it could, you know, this because Becky's sort of always been a little bit of the odd one out in terms of, like, big wins and accolades when it comes to the four horsewomen. That's why I would have Becky go over here to sort of cement that, you know, she's super over with the crowd, but at the same time, she doesn't really have that uh, win count or that big thing to sort of set her apart. I know she was the inaugural uh, SmackDown Women's Champion, uh, Champion, but that was a while ago now. I mean, she hasn't really done that much since. And you could make the argument that Charlotte and Sasha and Bailey have really sort of over, uh, over, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Overshadowed her, uh, in a way. So this is just a way to sort of, you know, put a little bit of that spotlight back on Becky, put a little bit more shine on her because she really deserves it. Uh, she's a great performer. She's organic. She's a great organic baby face. Uh, and so, yeah, I just, I think that would be a great match with a great story, great in-ring work from two really talented competitors. Uh, moving on back to Raw, this is a match that, of course, everyone wants to see. How it's actually booked, I have no idea. This is a thing of just, I'm just putting the match out there (laughs) because I know everyone wants to see it. I'm a little bit indifferent to it, but I know everyone would be crazy about it, is Bray Wyatt versus either Broken or Woken Hardy. Just because it's uh, you just got to do it. You, and you got to do it at WrestleMania. So, hey. <laughs> um, and just to be a dick, I'll have Bray Wyatt go over. <laughs> because come on, he, he, he jobs a lot. He jobs a lot. Every now and again, you, you kind of sort of gotta just let him win something (laughs) please 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 push Bray Wyatt god uh, he's so talented and he can be very over if you just book him right just oh anyway (laughs) that's enough of my ranting all right so now you're gonna also notice that uh yes every title is defended on the main card because it should be. Uh, <laughs> because of that, though, there's not a lot of like personal matches or just story matches. A lot of the matches that do have stories are going to also be for a title. I mean, be ju- because, I mean, it's WrestleMania. Why wouldn't you have every title defended? So, whatever. Uh, here I have Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles, who is the champion for the US title, because everyone wants to see this match. <laughs> From the little tease that we got at Money in the Bank, everyone has wanted this match. Uh, And so we're going to give it to him. And we're going to give it to him for the U.S. title because why not? I mean, it doesn't need to be for the WWE Championship. And Shinsuke's not ready for that yet. Uh, And why not push the prestige of the U.S. title in the process? So Shinsuke versus AJ for the U.S. title in a very hard-hitting, evenly contested match. Shinsuke just squeaks out with a Kinshasa at the last minute. Uh, Ooh, wouldn't it be great to see a phenomenal forearm into a Kinshasa? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) See, come on. This match is... Oh, anyway. I would have Shinsuke just narrowly beat... uh, Just narrowly best AJ Styles. Maybe it starts... Uh, you know, a little bit of a feud or like a best of after WrestleMania so they can continue that. But I would have Shinsuke walk away, mutual handshake uh, between two legends. Uh, AJ leaves the ring for Shinsuke to celebrate, and it's amazing because, of course, it will be. Uh, Next, we have a match that uh, since SummerSlam just ended, a match that I know everyone would want to see. Uh, especially with the result I have, is Braun Strowman versus Samoa Joe 
for the Intercontinental Championship with Samoa Joe being the champion and Braun growing over and winning his first title at WrestleMania. I... Look. (laughs) Everyone is super into Braun Strowman right now. I don't want to see him with the Universal title. I think he's still too one note for that. Um... I don't think he's interesting enough to win the uh, Universal title yet. But the IC belt, of course, I mean, yeah, then, uh, yeah, he could totally win that and totally make it uh, mean something because of how over he is. And he could bring that to the IC championship. Not that Miz doesn't, uh, but I do think that soon someone a bit more uh, high profile is going to take that belt from him. Just in terms of, like... Uh, star power and like drawing power like someone someone that was you know just in the main event of SummerSlam is what I mean uh not again I like the Miz especially right now I like what the Miz is doing uh he's not really on my card because uh, presumably presumably he would be in like the Andre the uh Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal man that's a, such a long name <laughs> Uh, But it's no disrespect to Miz. I think he definitely deserves more. And he is a brilliant uh, heel and a brilliant worker. And he does work hard for what he has. And he's very deserving of all the things he's accomplished. But. (laughs) But. (laughs) Uh, Samoa Joe's going into WrestleMania. My WrestleMania as the Intercontinental Champion. Because why not? Yeah, it's Samoa Joe. Give him a title. <laughs> and Braun Strowman's going to take it from him at WrestleMania. Next, I have, uh, for the SmackDown Tag Team titles, I have the Ascension, because why not? It's SmackDown, the land of opportunity, and everyone can be repackaged. Uh, versus the New Day, who are the champions, because I'm pretty sure they're going to get those titles back. I just, mm, call it a feeling. I think they're going to get those titles back. Uh, This is basically just a Clash of Styles match in, you know, SmackDown where they got to start, you know, bringing other teams up. It can't just be the New Day and Usos forever and ever till the end of time, even though I wouldn't really mind because they put on fantastic matches. Uh, But, you know, come on. It's the Ascension. They were the biggest thing in NXT for a bit. You know, they were they made those NXT tag titles mean mean something. Uh, and then they were just brought up to the main roster and just completely demolished. So, come on. Let's give them something. Let's have them put on a great match against the New Day. I would still have New Day retain, but it doesn't really damage the Ascension, I don't think. Uh, Especially if you do put on a great match, then people are more just going to remember that they put on a great match than who won. Uh, For the Raw Women's Championship, this went through a couple different iterations. Just because I feel like Triple H always has a match at WrestleMania. You'll notice on this card, he doesn't. Uh, Just because right now, it doesn't really... You know, I'm not going to force a match just to give Triple H a match. Um, And there's nothing organically that would just have Triple H fighting against somebody at WrestleMania. I mean, you could try to do Triple H versus Shane, but that's a little forced since they're on Raw, and then you could try to do Kurt Angle versus Triple H, but they haven't really been hinting at that at all, so... Eh. But what I have been interested to see is that, you know, Triple H always seems to have a match at WrestleMania. Why not have Stephanie in a match at WrestleMania? So originally, the plan was to have, uh, I think, Stephanie versus Sasha, or Stephanie versus Bayley... And then it went to Stephanie versus Sasha and versus Bailey in a triple threat. And then that sort of got changed because in order for that to happen, I would have wanted Steph to screw over one of them for the title. And so Stephanie walks into uh, WrestleMania as the Raw Women's Champion. Could you imagine the heat? Could you imagine the heat? <laughs> Stephanie McMahon books herself to win the Raw Women's Championship, claiming to bring prestige back to the title. (laughs) 
That would be awesome. I would love that would be brilliant heel work on the part of Stephanie McMahon. But it would have meant that either Bailey or Sasha would take it off her, which would give Sasha another title reign, which I don't think she needs. And or it's giving it to Bailey, who's in the middle of a kind of character identity crisis. Though it could be, I mean, in the few leading up, you could definitely repair her character and make her more of a fighter and sort of try to remedy this hole they dug her into with the whole, oh, I don't want to use a kendo stick, oh, but you're fine with almost breaking Sasha Banks' hand in NXT. <laughs> um, but ultimately, what I ended up with was just basically Stephanie still being the catalyst for the match and saying that, you know, the the women's division isn't what it used to be. It's grown stale. The revolution has, you know, gone awry. And nothing's happened with it yet. I want to see more. I want to see better from my women, especially on Raw. And because of that, I've brought in a catalyst for change. Uh, or something like, I'm going to shake things up a bit. And in walks Asuka, finally debuting on the main roster which would lead us to Asuka versus Bayley versus Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship, uh, with Sasha Banks still champion. Uh, so it would it would be interesting because, you know, you would have tension between Bayley and Sasha. They both want to be champion. They both have a reasonable argument to say that the other would never have really been champion without the other, like... Sasha wouldn't have been champion at SummerSlam if Bailey hadn't gotten injured, and Sasha can easily retort with, well, you wouldn't have won your championship if I hadn't helped you. Uh, and you could also bring back the NXT days. Meanwhile, Asuka is the sort of the woman in the middle who doesn't really care about any of their history. And maybe you could also sprinkle in the fact that uh, Asuka has beaten Bailey before, but then... An interesting thing is that Asuka has never beaten Sasha before. I don't think they've ever even wrestled. So, it's just an interesting dynamic, basically. Uh, and I would, I would, of course, have Asuka win. I would have, I would have Asuka win that match. <laughs> because, of course she would. Uh, next, next we're getting into good stuff. Uh... We're finally heading into the three main events of the show. So we have our WWE Championship match, which is... I really want I really want this to happen, but it's not going to. But I really want it to happen. Sami Zayn versus champion Kevin Owens. Because, of course. Because, please. <laughs> because, come on. <laughs> <laughs> this is just this is basically me pleading like we, okay you didn't give us Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho when you should have when you really needed to for the title please then make it up to us by giving us Sammy versus Kevin for the title and of course Sammy Zayn wins because you've got to have the underdog win at WrestleMania and oh my gosh I would just love that so much that'd be so great and I believe isn't that the person that uh, Kevin Owens wanted a match at at WrestleMania anyway. I can't remember who he said. He said he wanted to face somebody at WrestleMania, or maybe it was multiple people. Uh, I, th I believe one of them was Sami Zayn, because they have such good matches and such history and everything. And I think that would be, I think that'd be great too. And then next, of course, we have John Cena versus Roman Reigns, because don't do it before WrestleMania, you idiots. Ugh. Why would you... Why would you waste John Cena versus Roman Reigns at any, anywhere but WrestleMania? Why would you do that? Don't do that. You've shown in the past you can, you can, you know, push towards a match that's months away. You did it with The Rock versus John Cena for a year. For a year you built towards that match. You mean to tell me you can't just build towards Cena and Reigns for a couple months? Like, come on. Don't do it before WrestleMania. Just do it at WrestleMania. And this way, hey, 
All the Reigns haters can finally be happy because look, guess what? He's not main eventing WrestleMania. Oh, <laughs> uh, bunch of crybabies. Anyway, <clears throat> what was that? Uh, <laughs> Uh, and yes, I would have Roman Reigns win because John Cena doesn't need to win this match. John Cena doesn't need to win this match. John Cena could lose every match from now on and his legacy would be just fine. He doesn't need to win any match anymore. Really? Not, not really. Uh, but in this match, I would have Reigns win. I would also have Reigns turn heel because come on, he's such, he's so much better as a heel. Um, <laughs> uh, no. Okay, no, he's not. I will say this. He's not better as a heel. He can be a phenomenal face, I believe, if basically half the audience would just get their panties out of a bunch. But it is the it is what it is. I think for now, for this feud, he has to be a bit of a heel. He's going to be a heel. I mean, they're going to boom no matter what. And so basically do what you did with... Cena versus Rock 2, and basically make Cena the heel of this, uh, uh, the way they made Cena the heel of the Cena Rock 2 match. Basically just make Roman a heel for this feud. Have him put on a great match. Hopefully he'll win over the respect of the people that boo him for basically no reason other than it's cool to boo Roman Reigns. Because he's not even... He's not even overpushed anymore. <laughs> People go like he's being pushed down our throats. No, he's not. Not anymore. <laughs> I mean, look, Dean Ambrose is the first member of the Shield to become Grand Slam champion. I mean, Seth at this point has kind of done more than Roman. The only difference is that Roman is put in more high-profile matches, but so what? So is John Cena. <laughs> I mean, Roman is a good wrestler. He's not spectacular on the mic, but he's not bad anymore either. So just get over it. Get over it. I've talked about that so many times. Anyway, our main event for the night is Demon King Finn Balor versus the champion Brock Lesnar because, God, I can't have anything nice. Brock Lesnar is going to still be champion by the time WrestleMania rolls around <sighs> for, for a year. As a part timer. Ugh. Anyway, now this match will be interesting because one, it's Demon King Finn Balor versus Brock Lesnar, which will be so interesting to see. And then I would also have Finn Balor turn heel to win the championship with the help of the club because you're not doing anything with them. Give us a good WrestleMania moment. Give us a good swerve. And give us something we have always wanted to see, which is the club in the WWE done properly. Come on. Just do it. Just do it. Just pull the trigger. And then draft AJ over to Raw and see what happens. <laughs> anyway, that's my thoughts on WrestleMania 34. Way too soon in advance. <laughs> What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, what did you think of my card? What would you do differently? Uh, let me know. Sound off in the comments. If you like this, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe as always. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you guys later.